Hello again, it's time for another book review. I um, waited a long time for two books to come out that I've been waiting for by two of my favorite writers. One of them was Cleet by James Lee Burke, which is like the 24th um, novel in the James, you know, the um, Dave Robichaux series. And um, also a book called One Deadly Eye. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the Doc Ford novels, um, but that's one I've been waiting for. I really like those novels. And um, this last one is set during the big hurricane that came through and um, messed up the island over, you know, in, in the Gulf of Mexico there, where um, the books are mainly set here in Florida. Um, so that um, led me into a little dilemma because the first book that came out on the fourth was the um, the Doc Ford novel, and I it wasn't available here at the Barnes and Noble where I um, where I live in Audubon Springs, and I so I finally ended up um, ordering one online from the store over in Orlando, you know, on Colonial Drive. And I wasn't able to get over there right away because I was working and I just didn't feel like driving over there in the evening. By the time I finally got over and got it, then it was only a couple days away from the James Lee Burke novel coming out. And so I had started reading a little bit of the, of One Deadly Eye. And then I ended up um, putting it aside to start on the, the Dave Robichaux novel. So my thoughts on that, the Dave Robichaux novel, Cleet, it's, it's a little bit different from the others that have been written just because it was written kind of first person from Cleet's perspective instead of Robichaud's this time. But it turned out, I mean, I, I ended up putting it aside when I got actually pretty close to the end and went to the, went to the Doc Ford novel, which I've been blowing through today. It's June, June 19th, so it's on Juneteenth, and I'm off work today since it's a federal holiday. And so... I've been blowing through that novel pretty good. I'm almost done with it. And um, I have to say, I'm, I'm much more into it than I, I am the Cleet novel. I've just, you know, through the years, the Dave Robichaux novels, I always liked them. I actually, um, I really liked Heaven's Prisoners, the movie that had, um, that had, um, oh shit, just right off the top of my head, <laughs> The name of the actor escapes me, um, Alec Baldwin, uh, which I thought was a really good movie. I've always liked that. But, um, man, the, the, the Robichaux novels, I've kind of gotten sick of just the, um, well, first of all, his hypocrisy, walking around acting like he's, you know, holier than thou, and um, talking about all the slime balls and scumbags that he has to deal with. But he's always, you know, having these, like, blackouts and trashing people and kicking people's asses you know and it's I think the um the whole recovering alcoholic thing has kind of gotten a little bit um, a little bit old for me it's an overused trope anyways I think you know and people needing to see their sponsor and it's it just gets overused but I'd always hope that maybe the character would mature a little more this book apparently is set back in time a little bit. I'm not really sure exactly where it falls because it talks about Robichaux having his three wives that had died already and everything. So I would think it was pretty late in his life, but it just seems to have like a little bit more of a, like an earlier setting. I don't know, maybe I've just lost track of the timeline um, and not, not paying attention enough. But this book, even though it's written from Cleet's perspective, which gives it a little bit of a more interesting kind of vibe, you know, in comparison to just um, the same old thing. In a lot of ways, it's still just the same old thing, you know. You know, you got Cleet and Dave both seeing dead people and talking to them, you know, and they're connected to the ghost of histor you know, historical characters that still, you know, roam the earth with us and that the dead are just as much real as the quick and all that sort of thing. And... I really was expecting it, you know, being written from Cleet's perspective to not be just quite that same old stuff. But 
it is, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going to finish it after I get done finishing this Doc Ford novel. But the Doc Ford novel was really good. Um, the One Deadly Eye, it's set during the um, that big hurricane that came through a while back. And so you've got that whole thing going on. But there's, you know, he did a really good job of integrating a lot of stuff that ties into Doc Ford's past and some of the stuff that he's done and setting, you know, quite a lot of action there. I was kind of, um, there's a little bit of a spoiler here for those of you who um, haven't read all the books. But at the end of the last book before this one, which is Salt River or something like that, I thought finally Doc Ford was going to end up spilling the beans about who he really is to his um, now fiance, which they still, he's, he's managed to artfully avoid that so far in this book, even though he hints that it's coming, you know, since they're engaged now and they're going to end up being married. But it's, you know, that's one thing too I kind of got a little tired of with the Doc Ford novels through the years that um, just going on and on and on with him hiding that from you know, Hannah, the woman he's been involved with on and off throughout all the books. So it looks like that's finally going to give us a little bit of satisfaction there eventually when he gets around to revealing some of his past and everything to who he, who he really is. Certainly a couple of his neighbors in this book seem to know all about him, you know, through their contacts. But it's a really good book, and I would recommend that if you're deciding which one to read first, if you're like me and you're a fan of both authors, James Lee Burke, you know, the way he describes a scene and everything, the language he uses is really, really interesting and far beyond what a lot of writers are. But the actual story itself, you know, I just, I've kind of gotten sick of the whole, you know, supernatural thing where he's kind of, where they're walking around with their lives being haunted by the ghost of dead people and stuff. And so that has gotten to be a bit of a distraction for me. But One Deadly Eye is, um, in my opinion, one of the better Doc Ford novels. So from a longtime fan who's read all of both series, for what it's worth, you know, those are kind of my, um, my thoughts about that. And um, if any of you enjoy those novels, I mean, they're probably both worth reading. If I was only going to read one, though, I'm sorry, James Lee Burke, but I would have to go with Doc Ford and... Um, get the Randy Wayne White novel. Both of them, both authors have three names, so there you go. I guess there's the common thread. Anyway, I gotta go pick up some food for my wife for her lunch break, so I'll talk to you all later.